you know, I, I think the insurance companies saying that they're worried about the public health insurance option is one of the better arguments for having one. You know, the fact that they think that this public health insurance option is going to have to change the way they do business is one of the arguments for doing it. Because, you know, if the private insurance companies were saying, oh, we're not so worried, you know, it's just, you know, it's just going to be another, you know, small competitive challenge, then I'd really wonder if this was going to provide the kind of check on, and benchmark uh, for private insurance companies that we need. You know, the, the, you know, there is valid criticisms of having a public health insurance uh, plan competing with private plans, and they're all addressed in the legislation that's been discussed on Capitol Hill. I mean, my proposal is argued for a level playing field, which means that the private and the public health insurance plan um, plans have to, com to abide by the same rules, that the public health insurance plan can't be funded by taxpayer dollars, it has to receive all its funds from the same sources that the private insurance plans receive, such as the subsidies for, for lower and middle income people who get coverage and the premiums that people pay. And finally, I've argued that there really should be strenuous efforts to make sure that there's uh, adequate adjustment for plans that take on a higher risk population. In fact, to me, that's one of the concerns, that the public health insurance plan is probably going to be more attractive to people who really need care because they want to have a transparent plan that's going to be there when they're sick. And if that's the case, we need to really work hard to make sure that the, the playing field isn't tilted against the public health insurance plan. So, you know, the other thing to say, and I think this is really crucial that people understand, is that what the private insurance companies are arguing against really is choice. I mean, they're arguing against the idea that there should be competition and people should be able to vote with their feet between private insurance plans and the new public insurance plan. You know, the polls suggest that people want to have that choice, but I think a lot of people are going to choose uh, private health insurance plans. They have name recognition. They've got decades of experience. They've got deep marketing pockets. Many people associate the government uh, with, you know, poorer service. So it's, you know, the public health insurance plan isn't going to start out with a dominant position. It will only gain a stronger position by convincing people that it can provide uh, better coverage and higher quality care. And ultimately, isn't that, I mean, what this is about, healthy competition, where the private insurance companies and the public plan are both building on their strengths and remedying their weaknesses. You know, private insurance plans have many virtues. Um, one, there, there are some that they don't have. They haven't been very good at holding down premiums. They haven't been very good at, at bargaining with providers. They haven't been as innovative as they say they have been in delivery of care. I mean, right now we're talking about Medicare taking the lead in reforming the delivery of our health care system. Well, I think that we should have a public health insurance plan for people younger than 65 that's contributing to that reform as well. So to me, you know, the best argument for it is the private insurance companies are worried about it because that's precisely what we need, real competition. Well, I think the co-op model is just a fig leaf for people who are opposed to the public health insurance plan and don't want to have the blood of the, of the public health insurance plan's demise on their hands. Because the Congressional Budget Office looked at this and said the co-ops weren't going to make any difference in the market. I mean, I'm not against the idea of having member-run cooperative health plans. There's some wonderful plans out there like Group, group Health Cooperative of Puget Sound or Health Partners in Minnesota. But those plans are very small and limited and even with new federal funds it's going to be very difficult to create those plans and have them compete effectively against these massive private insurance plans that dominate the market today. I mean Group Health Cooperative of Puget Sound has a half million members and WellPoint has something like 33 million members. So you need to have some very serious counterweight on day one to the private insurance plans and only a public health insurance plan that's linked to the Medicare program in important respects is going to have that. So one of the things that's really important about the House legislation is that it creates this new public health insurance plan in part building on the infrastructure of Medicare. It's run by the Department of Health and Human Services. It's a federal program. It will be offered nationwide. You know, it will not have uh, rates that are tied to Medicare's rates. That was a concession that was made to get the votes necessary to pass it. But it will have the Secretary of Health and Human Services negotiating rates with providers and probably uh, using the bargaining power of this large pool uh, effectively to try to keep down rates. So to me, you know, the cooperatives are really just a way of saying that, uh, a way of sort of hiding opposition to the public health insurance plan. Um, and, you know, the there's only a few, I think, people who seriously think they're going to work. And the, one of them is Kent Conrad of North Dakota, so that's why they're in the legislation. But I think for the most part, they don't have very strong support uh, either in Congress or outside it.